Hello again, this is part two on the compression steel member. Uh, we're still in the, intro, in the introduction. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. Part of the, uh, the criteria that, that we have to look for in order to find the effective length factor is that if your column is fixed, fixed ends, let me grab my pen here. If it's fixed, fixed end, so this is your column. Excuse me, it's not very professional. You have a fixed, fixed end. That's what we call it, fixed, fixed ends. Then it will buckle a point of inflection about uh, L. So the L is the distance of the column over four, uh, that from, from, uh, from an end. So it could be from here or from here. If your effective length is half of the length. Remember the fixed end, it's fixed against uh, from statics and the structure, if you guys remember. Uh, it's fixed against the Y axis, the X axis and the moment, right? While the, uh, the, the hinge, if it's hinged, column, then it's fixed against the y-axis and x-axis on, right? So then uh, having said that, let me grab my laser pointer, having said that we have the, uh, um, uh, the inflection point will be quarter of the length if it was fixed fixed. Now, if your column is um, in, uh, is fixed from one end, and one end and braced, and when we we say braced, that means your column is part of a big frame. Um, so it could be two girders, one in this side, one in this side, or beams and so forth, but it's still fixed, right? So then you will have to use something called the alignment chart. This is the alignment chart. This is how it looks like. And from the alignment chart, we need to find K. K is the effective length factor. But to find K, you need to find first GA and GB. So how, what is the equation of G in general? Is the summation of the moment of inertia of the column divided by the length of the column over the summation of the moment uh, uh, of inertia for the girder divided by the length of the girder. That's how you find G. But GA stands for uh, one side of the column, GB, uh, GA one side of the column, GB is the other side of the column. And uh, to find K, basically, once you find the value of G, uh, GA and GV, then you cross them. And whenever they're crossed, then the point where, which, where the, la, uh, the line lands, that's your point on, on this diagram here, on this scale, and that's your K value. So as far as the alignment chart, we have two types. The first type is sideway not prevented. And the other side, uh, the other type of uh, alignment chart is the side prevented, right? So if you're, for instance, IB, uh, I, I beam column, uh, if it's uh, prevented from swaying, then you should use this side. If it's, uh, if it's not prevented, if it's prevented, then you should use this side. So what is the difference? Now, if you look with me, you see the values are different. See, so it starts here. If it's uh, non-prevented side, it starts from one, and it goes uh, one, uh, point by point five all the way to infinity. As opposed to this one, it starts from point five, and it ends at one. So that's the difference here. Now the value of the uh, uh, moment of inertia for column and for girders are, uh, are taken about the axis of bending moments. In other words, if your uh, column is hinged, then your G is 10, value of 10. If your uh, column is fixed, rigidly fixed, 
then your G is one always. So to be able to use the alignment chart, your column should always buckle elastically, which means the value of KL should be always larger than 4.71 under the radical modulus of elasticity divided by FY. If your column uh, buckled inelastically, then tau A should be used. This is a reduction factor. So what is tau A? is the ratio of the tangent modulus of elasticity to the modulus of elasticity of a steel. Uh, so you have tau equal PU over the area, the gross area. <clears throat> so then how we, uh, let me grab my pen here because I think I'll need it. Um, let's imagine, so here again, we start talking about the effective length factor and which is K and how we find it. So let's imagine we have a building, looks like this, two stories building, right? Those are columns, those are girders. And let's say whether it's fixed, this column, or hinged, let's say this is hinged and this is fixed, okay? So we have story number one, story number two. If you're, you're working with a column, let's say we have a third column here, goes all the way down, you have a column here. Let's say we're working with this column here. If you're working on this column, then your K, uh, if it's hinged, then it's going to be K equal two, if it's hinged. If it's fixed, then your K is equal 1.2. Now, if you're working on a column in the upper store, then your K is always 1.2. Now for a braced column, this is what we call a braced column, right? That's our column here. It's a braced from three sides at this point. Then your K here is 0.65. So I added this chart here for you. You may not find it in the, in the textbook, uh, uh, steel chapters. Uh, but you probably will find another chapter. So I would recommend every time you want to find the K value is always to come to this chart. Always. It'll make your life easier and uh, it'll, it'll, it'll be very easy to follow. So the way we read this chart is we have the buckling mode. Either it's a non-sway or a sway. Then we have the end condition. Is it both end fixed, this side and this side fixed? or one fixed and one hinged, one hinged and one fixed, or both ends hinged, both of them hinged, or so that's for the non sway. And the same goes for, uh, no, actually it's different. So for the, the sway one, both ends are fixed, and one hinged, one fixed, and uh, one fixed, one free. Those are the K values, these two rows. The theoretical value is something we don't recommend to take. This is just for theoretical and probably research purposes, but the recommended value is always we take. So then uh, if you ever get confused with the, with the figure, then you always can reference those here and what do you mean by uh, free rotation, translation free, that means this, is fig this figure. If it's uh, rotation fixed, translation free, then this is what they mean. If it's rotation free, translation fixed, and so on and so forth. So why this is helpful? If you read the problem statement, you, then you will uh, you understand what do they mean by mentioning these vocabularies, what kind of figures uh, they're talking about. So then the way you find the K value is from this row. If you are given a column, uh, none sway, fixed, fixed, then your K value is 0.65, right? That's what we mentioned, if it's braced and fixed. If your column is, for instance, is a swaying, free swaying, um, one fixed and one hinge, then your K value is two, and so on and so forth. So I feel this, uh, this table here is extremely useful, and I would recommend using it a lot every time you wanna find K value. <clears throat> 